ladies and gentlemen welcome back into the channel for another reaction video today we are it's, it's long overdue we're finally reacting to schaeferless's mario kart Wii course ranking video uh his original video will be in the description as well as all of our other rankings or all of our other reaction videos to schaeferless's re reactions those will all be in the description plus our own mario kart double dash ranking and mario kart double dash item rankings Check out all those videos in the description, but super excited. Mario Kart Wii's a great game. One of the best Mario Karts, I think, so. Let, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was his first uh, ranking of all these Mario Karts. Pretty interesting. This was his first uh, ranking of all the Mario Karts, so he's just explaining here that he's doing them all separately. And then I can rank all 96 of those courses in one video. Woo, how fun. I regret this already. That's going to be such a long project from him, but I I'm super excited for when that does come out. But, it's, I mean, now it seems like the DLC, the last DLC is going to be maybe early 2024, so we may still be a, w a ways away from that video, unfortunately. Anywho, I could start with the first game, Super Mario Kart, but literally no one would click on that. Are you seriously going to tell me with a straight face that you genuinely care about whether or not I would rank Donut Plains 2 over Donut Plains 3? Yeah. Dude, we all know it's Donut Plains 3 though, right? Right, everybody? That shit. That shit. <laughs> We're starting with Mario Kart Wii. My first Mario Kart that I grew up with. Okay. The most popular one, aside from the one that still refuses Interesting to that he grew up with Wii. I, you I wouldn't have expected that. was greatly exaggerated. Say what you will about Mario Kart Wii's unbalanced bikes and unbalanced items mm -hmm. and unbalanced Funky Kongs, but... Yeah, a lot of unbalanced things taking place in this game that, as I've gotten older, take away from the game just a tad, but at its core, this is an incredibly fun Mario Kart. I think anyone can argue that Mario Kart Wii didn't have some banger tracks to race on. Oh, so 100%. So many courses that have become huge staples of the Mario Kart franchise. But which ones are the cream of the crop? And which ones are f***ing GBA track GBA Shy Guy Beach is quite possibly just the most egregious track ever. Ever, ever, ever. And I cannot believe they decided to bring that back in this game. That's, I mean, that's fair. That's a good spot. Then I sat down to play it for this video, and holy shit, this course is horrible. The little round islands you have to hop between in order to not slow down are awkward. The trick ramps are tiny and unsatisfying. The cannonballs that land on the course can be pretty unfair when they come out of nowhere. And on top of that, the course is ugly. Super Circuit is a... It, this is one of the worst courses to look at, uh, or to look at, without a doubt. Uh, it, it feels awful driving on it. Yeah, the the enemies, the bombs, the crabs, it, it's just really bad. Good looking sprite based game, but its visuals have not been translated over well to we Yeah, that's the thing. I actually I remember playing this on Game Boy and I, I liked it enough. I really did. And I, I think the driving in that game fit with the uh, the course a lot better. Like I just said, it feels awful to drive on this track in Wii. What what I'm trying to say is in the Game Boy version, it didn't feel like that. So, it's just the way that the vehicles drive in those two games. It just lends its this track lends itself much better to the Game Boy. What with the choppy water and stale backgrounds, there is actually no reason to ever pick this course. Yeah. Aside from the pretty music, it offers nothing but a headache. Yeah. Don't don't pick that track ever. One of my favorite things to look at with each new Mario Kart. Are we are we ranking Mushroom Gorge at thirty one? There's no way. The priority retro courses. As in, the courses from the previous game that the developers considered a priority to bring back as soon mm -hmm. as possible. For Mario Kart Wii, these would be the retro courses from Mario Kart DS. That game certainly had a stellar lineup of tracks to pick from. So aren't you glad that one of the developers' priorities was to bring back Yoshi Falls? Dude, Yoshi Falls is so bad. And honestly, I, I, there's not many... Uh, there's not many of the the old tracks that they brought back that I actually enjoy too much in this game. Um, and honestly, a lot of the original versions of the tracks I I like better. For, you know, from their previous game. 
compared to, to the Mario Kart Wii version of it. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep this going. Well, this is honestly this is a, such an insulting filler pick. Yeah. Think of all the masterpieces I mean, this is a fair ranking. It's a bad, it's a very bad track. And gifted to the masses who got into the series through Wii. I could have been growing up with Airship Fortress, TikTok Clock, Luigi's Mansion, motherfucking Waluigi Pinball. But no, Yoshi Falls just had to be one of their first choices to return. I haven't even talked about the course itself yet, but like... What the f do you want me to say? Drive in an oval three times. Make some turns designed for babies. This is pitifully simple by Mario Kart 64 standards. But by the standards of DS, it's a true embarrassment. So short and boring that it ended up being the last Yoshi themed course in the series. No. Dude, look at that. The Yoshi courses went extinct after this abomination. That should tell you everything you need to know. Seriously. There has not been another Yoshi themed course since this one. It's kind of hilarious, actually. Anyway, those two courses are bad and D tiers, but thankfully, we're on to the mediocre ones now. Mm, so, a tier jump already. The Interesting. There's a few other duds. C, which ones are next? Do, do, you, get, do you get it? Because, because the letter C sounds like the word C. Do you uh, get it? Uh, uh. Oh my, you sh we're already getting hit with the advertisement. Look at this. What is this AI? Dude, AI's taking over the world. I don't know what that was, but this is, it's unbelievable. AI is officially taking over. I'm, I don't know what's happening. I really don't. This is, this, the Sherbert landed, get, put it, put it in the, the same tier. This is D tier. This, what is this? No, this is D tier. Look at this long straightaway. That's just so pointless. Look at that long straightaway. It was in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, though, so that's pretty epic. Okay, yeah, nice little cameo for that game. There, nothing about that course makes it C tier. I'm sorry. Like the the top courses in C tier are gonna look down on that and say we're you know that they're insulted that they're in the same tier as N64 Sherbert Land. I'm I, it, it's not good. I don't think it's a spoiler or an unpopular opinion to say that the retro courses in Wii aren't nearly as good as the brand new that's what i'm saying nintendo didn't really hit their stride with remastering old courses until seven and especially eight so i don't think it comes fair a shock that my bottom three has entirely been some of the retros with that said out of the 16 brand new nitro courses i just love the mario kart wii theme going on in the background it just it just gets me it just gets me going specifically for wii which one of those is the worst one is luigi <sighs> Dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Schaefer. I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out. I'll hear you out before I say anything. But unless this is literally your first time playing the game, there's no reason whatsoever to pick this one outside of the giant statue of Luigi that has a random Love it. on it if you're playing as a me. Love it. Pretty much the best feature exclusive. Look at that. Movie, honestly. I love the courses that did this. But sadly, that's pretty much all this course has. Put a little respect on Luigi's name next time, guys. <laughs> Look. You know, Schaeferless, he, I, I, I feel like he's always ranking the Luigi circuits way too low. Or, you know, the basic starter track. And obviously, I understand it. You know, we have to rate these on an objective scale to where the intro, you know, the first track of the game is not meant to be super cool with all these uh, mechanics and unique elements because it's supposed to be basic. It's not supposed to be difficult. Uh, but, and so, you know, we can't just put it on a curve because of that necessarily. But, you know, sometimes simplicity ha has its merits, and, you know, courses that try to do too much and that just aren't very fun, to me, are worse than a bland course that is still fun. I, I enjoy driving on Luigi's and racing on Luigi's Circuit versus a course like Sherbert Land that's trying to do way too much and, and is not good. I think he needs to put some a little bit more respect on the Luigi Circus. He did the same thing in Double Dash for sure. Double Dash, Luigi Circuit should have been way higher. You know, not way higher, you know, two, three spots yeah, i'd have to take a look at the ranking again i'm assuming that course needs to be higher too this, this luigi circuit and again it's, it's a nitpick i'm not i'm not saying luigi circuit is like a top 10 course i'm just saying like most likely i would move it up a couple spots but we'll, we'll see it as we keep going through this yeah luigi circuits is better than this luigi circuits better than this this isn't fun to look at. 
not terrible, but not impressive. And this is it's less fun to drive on this course than than Luigi Circuit. It's it's less fun to look at. Like I'm just looking at uh, some random yellow sky with green like hills versus I get giant Luigi statues, the cheap cheap thing, and it's just you know even the the like kind of you know stadium itself with all the fans like that's just way more appealing than this. Yeah, this made no sense as a lightning cup. But like to me, when I played this track, it took the life out of me. Anybody else feel that way? It, this course took the life out of me. Like I just, I'm like, ugh. Down and otherwise, really I'm just fun. deflated after racing on this. Or special enough to justify being this far in the track selection list. I mean, Ghost Valley too, a shell cup course. At least had the courtesy to put a boost and a jump pad right uh, before the finish line. While Mario Sort gets. That's a quality addition. Such an odd thing to call the developers out on, but like when you think about it, the math ain't adding up on that one. Like, what were the devs doing? The course is tied with SNES Rainbow Road for being the most recurring course in the entire series. That's a major problem. Like, we all got to take a long look in the mirror if this is the track that appears the most throughout all the games. Appearing five different times in Super, Super Circuit, Wii, Tour, and 8 Deluxe. Call me crazy, but I don't really see the appeal. Anyway, let's move on. The thing is, I don't think anybody sees the appeal. Schaeferless? I mean, you guys can let me know in the comments, but it seems just like it, it's, it's one of the devs, like, you know, I don't know, projects, or, you know, one of their little pet projects that they're doing. Like, I, I don't get it. They just want to keep trying to improve it and make everybody love it. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. All the usual Mario Circuit trappings. Grass, trees, a pipe. Wow, I'm so impressed. Cutting corners with mushrooms. Of like, I'm not going to lie. This is a track where I think I'm slotting Luigi Circuit ahead of this. But to me, this is just a little bit too long. Again, I get a much worse background, too long of straightaways. The first kind of part that has some tough turns in it, like, yeah, sure, but two very long straightaways, even then another, like, pretty long straight away not near the finish line like I, I mean i understand luigi circuits kind of you could argue that the whole thing is straightaways but like it's not that long of a track um I, again i just especially with like the boost panels on luigi circuit and especially when you add items into luigi circuit i just think it's a lot more chaotic and and, and makes for a better overall experience this one could be pretty fun but for the most part i just forget this course exists Come on, it's yeah do the Mario. Um. Oh. Favorite YouTube video? Doesn't it sound like he says SpongeBob? Discuss. Seriously, wait, discuss it because there's nothing else to discuss about this. Wait, wait, wait. I, we have to go watch that back. Video. Mario says SpongeBob by Vector Chaotix One. <sighs> Chat, what are we thinking? I, I could hear it. I definitely could. But it could be one of those things where, like, whatever word you're seeing on the screen, that's what it sounds like in your head. I, I need to like close my eyes and just see if I hear SpongeBob. Doesn't it sound like he says SpongeBob? Discuss. Seriously, mm. discuss it because there's nothing else to discuss. This is an this is an alright track. Um, if you you know I know you all everybody most people I'd say like ninety percent of people are, probably think I'm rambling about Luigi Circuit way too long. But I mean, so far we're, look we're at the bottom tier tracks. I'm just trying to get some healthy debate and discourse going. There's nothing else to really talk about. But for those ten percent of people that may uh, if the, if, for the 10% of people that were curious if I think this track is better than Luigi Circuit. I'm not sure. Let me, let me check my ranking. I did a brief ranking a while back. And we had Luigi Circuit one spot higher. You, you got, you gotta, you gotta respect it. Lu Luigi Circuit over Mario Circuit. 
put some respect on Luigi's name. I had to check my ranking. I mean, they go back and forth. You could ask me tomorrow, and I'd, I'd do it the other way, but... Oh, spooky scary. Well, look at that. But yeah, you know, shout out to the 10% of people that, that are liking that Luigi Circuit discourse. That's... I don't, I don't hate racing on that either. Uh, I'm certainly not like a good track. Uh, for some reason, the boardwalk tracks, I always really enjoy racing on. It just, for some reason, feels good. It feels like you're driving faster. I don't really know what it is. Um, maybe it's just a men mental thing. I, I really don't know. But I, I think it's a good enough track. Cool atmosphere. Um, pretty bland. It, it's another one of those where especially with the unbalanced items like it's just complete and utter chaos you could go from first place to seventh in a blink of an eye um but that and that's not my favorite thing in a mario game like but i'm, I'm sure a lot of people don't mind that as much either I, I think it's a it's a fair spot i mean i don't think anybody's gonna rank it too high Dude, what are these references to Mario and Sonic? Let me let me check let me check the rankings really here. Uh, dude, I can't speak today. I am all over the place. What did I? What words just came out of my mouth? I was trying to say. Let me check my rankings really quick here. I feel like that's a little low for Moo Moo Meadows. I, I mean, I'm a Moo Moo Meadows fan, and I always have been, and I always will be. To me, this is criminally lo low for Moo Moo Meadows. I think Moo Moo Meadows um, is is really a, a super simple track done right because it doesn't feel like you're driving on some bland like mario or luigi circuit it, it, it does have a very distinct atmosphere compared to uh the rest of the tracks and although it might not be the most like the coolest environment you know you're not driving through some big castle or on some you know rainbow road it's nothing like that you know you're in the farmland but like still very distinct uh i i liked the implementation of of the moles, of the cows, and I, I, I just think it should be a lot higher. To me, that's like simple, done best, really. Like it's, it's like the elite of a simple track, and an elite simple track for me should be higher than this. What did I just hear? Yeah, dude, DS, DS Desert Hills is garbage. It makes me want to throw up. Dude, whichever one of your friends, Schaeferless, convinced you to rank it higher than you should have. Dude, you, hey, what do they always tell you when you're taking a test in school? You stick with your gut. You stick with your first answer. Don't don't let your friend influence you just because, you know, he's a fanatic of DS Desert Hills for some reason. This is a bad track. Moo Moo Meadows is better than this. <laughs> this is not a good course. I'm sorry. I don't like desert courses much at all. Plus, much like Yoshi Falls, this is another example of a priority course that just makes zero sense. When presented with all these bangers and Look at this. Waluigi Pinball. We got I like Cheap Cheap Beach. TikTok Clock? Wario Stadium? DK Pass? I mean I Air Airship Fortress, don't even get me started. Luigi's Mansion, Shroom Ridge. Why in the name of God's green earth would you ever willingly choose to bring back Desert Hills immediately? It seems like the kind of course you'd only bring back after you've exhausted all other options. But nope, here it is, right away. It's fine, I guess. There's no. a variety of obstacles and scenery. Plus, this windy part towards the end is pretty fun to traverse. Uh, I mean... It's overall a perfectly okay course. Mm, this is subpar. This isn't okay. This is another one of those courses where, like, if I'm playing, you know, a lot of the times back in the day, I'd, be, I'd go 32... 32 races put it on random that way you play every every course once and you know just get the gauntlet going right when this course loads up it's another one of those that just deflates me it sucks the air out of the room I, this is this is a drag and moon meadows 
is infinitely Which better than it. Desert track is a fucking miracle. Anyway, that's all the C tiers. Now let's move on to the B tiers. B tier. Pretty good, actually. That's we're already pretty high. Yeah, to me, Moo Moo Meadow is B tier. Bowser Castle Three, not Bowser's Castle Three. No, no, no. He doesn't own this one. <laughs> it's just inexplicably themed around him. It's a good anyway, distinction that needs to be made. The SNES slash GBA offerings in this game. The trick ramps are still as pitifully small as the ones in Shy Guy Beach, and they don't feel super fun to use. But otherwise, this course is pretty solid. Lots of sharp turns, thwomps to dodge, and a very cool, sinister, and oppressive atmosphere with good backgrounds and music to boot. At the end of the day, yeah, it's still a flat GBA course, but it manages to be solidly fun in spite of that. I mean, I agree with everything that he said right there. Um, this this is a good course. Uh, I like the challenge with the with the sharp turns, like he mentioned. Um, to me, honestly, that that course needs to be ranked higher for me. I think, you know, at at the beginning, I said there's not many remake courses that I I really like, and I know he kind of alluded to the same thing. But there's obviously some that we we have not seen yet in his ranking, and. I'm just going to tell you, I think I have those a lot lower than he has them. And so we'll get to them when we get to them. But the, that one, that's like one of my favorite of, of the remakes. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think that should be higher. What do you know? It's another desert course. But this one's good, I swear. Dry Dry Ruins <laughs> is the developers taking a look at Double Dash's Dry Dry Desert and saying, what if we tried this again, but didn't make it boring this time? <laughs> Lo and behold, a pretty neat course where you traverse through a pyramid with the help of some random half pipes. I like how the center of the pyramid slowly fills with sand as the laps progress. It doesn't make a huge difference gameplay-wise, but it is a neat detail. Also, Yoshi Sphinx. That's a really, really good thing. I like that. All in all, let this be a lesson. If you're planning on making a desert course, either oh. put something cool in it, like a pyramid or a train, or else don't bother. Looking at you, bone dry dunes, you piece of shit. <laughs> you know, that might have been a little harsh to, to bone dry runes. But, um, look, desert courses aren't my favorite either. I, I agree with a lot of what he said. Uh, I mean, Yoshi Sphinx, you can't really beat that. Rising sand. I kind of like the half pipes area, especially because with the sand rising there, uh, you, you know, you really need to make sure that you do hit those half pipes. You're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Look, it's still, it's nothing crazy. It's not something, uh, you know, it's not a course I particularly love. Yeah, I'm curious where I actually put this. Uh, I, you know, I'm sorry to keep going back to my ranking, but I, I just want to, you know, try to tell it to you all straight and like i said if you guys want me to, to to you know make a whole video exp you know telling you my whole ranking explaining it and justifying all these rankings definitely let me know in the description if you'd like that and smash that like button if you're enjoying the video uh would be greatly appreciated i had dry dry ruins though at 16 uh so smack dab in the middle uh so actually quite a bit higher than him uh, just you know moo moo meadows by the way ahead of dry dry ruins that's seems criminal um but i'm telling you man it moo meadow is the elite of the elite of the simple tracks and, and you know uh, we're seeing some yeah some of these some of these older tracks I, I just put a lot lower than he did my mom always liked playing on this one when i was younger but for some reason she always thought it was called pebble beach i mean it probably does have a lot of pebbles on it so that's valid i guess anyway it's wild how the shell cup just peaks at the very beginning with this course before instantly dissolving into mediocrity this course being so good and a starter for what is traditionally the lamest cup in every mario kart game is the reason i'm not very forgiving the yoshi falls or mario raceway but yeah overall a lovely little course that offers branching paths delightful music nice visuals and the final canonical appearance of the cataclax <laughs> no seriously to this day mario kart wii is the last time they ever appeared in a video game nintendo what the fuck did you do to them where the fuck are the cataclax please for the love of god nintendo tell me what the fuck happened to the cataclax right now dude the cataclax needed to be absolutely obliterated from all mario games those things are the main of my existence in mario kart and i'm sure many of you would agree with that you if you guys have watched our double dash course ranking video you watch my reaction to shaferless's 
uh, double dash course ranking video, you're going to know I am not a fan of Peach Beach. I think I had it second to last in double dash. However, to me, this is a track. It's still not my favorite in Wii. This is one of the few uh, remakes, remade tracks that I think actually improved substantially. They didn't really change much to it, but just the way that the game plays, the item selection, I enjoy Peach Beach much more on Wii than I do Double Dash. So I I can accept that ranking quite a bit more. Uh, and this is why you're also going to see some other... Uh, of the re you know some of the other remade tracks that Schaeferless probably has a lot higher on his tier list, a lot lower on my tier list, and I'm not going to agree with that ranking because to me, I think that the old version of the track is actually better, and that this version is either worse or just didn't really get better, or maybe just slightly got better, and that's not enough for me to justify it to be at you know super high up. So that's just a forewarning for everybody. DK's Jungle Parkway okay. is a nice, windy, and satisfying jungle course. It's pretty solid with a good theme, though the big ramp is a little lame nowadays. Not just because it's prime glider material if this course was remade in 7 or 8, but because you actually had slight control where you landed in the N64 original, which is just completely gone. Fun fact. You just land where it makes you land, which is fine, not a huge deal or anything. Just kind of meh. The narrow bridge at the end is really cool though. It's definitely fun to leave some bananas or shells there to whack other players with. And I like the temple at the end too. My brother and I had a headcanon that this temple was a shrine to the Great Banana. Which is just some sort of giant mystical banana we completely made up in our heads. And then three years later, Mario Kart 7 comes out, we play DK Jungle, and holy shit, the Great Banana! The Great Banana is real! Can we get much higher? Great. How does it how does it all come full circle? How does it all come full circle? Um, I mean, I agree. That, that's a solid track. I don't I don't really have much else to add to it. Uh, I I do really like how the the items pile up on the bridge. Uh, very similar to DK Mountain. You know, the items piling up on the bridge. Uh, I like that bridge better because it doesn't have the railing. So you especially because you you know you're, it's kind of bouncy and it and it moves. Um, you could either just fall off by by driving, or you get like hit with an item box or a banana or something, and you could you could fall off. Where this one, obviously, you can't fall off. But I mean, it, it's it's a perfectly fine track. Again, I'm not like going crazy over this track. I used to really like it as a kid, just because it was so cool, and you know, I never played the original. But as I've gotten older, it, it, it's it's meh. It's all right. Another Mario Circuit. I genuinely couldn't tell you what it is about the GameCube Mario Circuit that I actually enjoy. Especially in comparison to the other three Mario circuits, I kinda trashed. I really don't know. This one just has more of a spark to it, I guess. More charm than the other ones. Between the chain chomp, piranha plants, tunnel, bumps in the road you can trick off of, and that last bridge where you gotta stick to the center to avoid the plants eating your ass, it's just got a lot of nice variety to it. Plus, the scenery and music just feel so whimsical and magical. Like you're at the Mario equivalent of Disney World or something. Yeah, I absolutely, positively do not know why, but this one just does it for me. It might be my favorite Mario circuit in the whole series. I think as a whole, Double Dash just really nailed the circuit tracks in a way most other games in the series didn't. But that's a story for another video. Mario Kart Double Dash. It is great. Now, I find it a little interesting that he's saying that Double Dash nailed the circuit tracks, but he ranked Luigi Circuit so low in that game. But nonetheless... This is definitely the best circuit track uh, in Mario Kart Wii. It, for some reason, it just does it for me, too. Um, I just like the different sections that this track has to offer. Um, yeah, I, I can't even really put my finger on it, but it's just like no no part portion of the track like overstays it welcome or, or drags on. There's not some super long stretch to it. It's just, a, it's a really solid track. Uh, and, and, you know, this is one where, like, I don't think we, the Wii version, added anything, really. It's not one where you could put in the half pipes, or they added different boost panels, or they didn't really add any new uh, enemies. Well, like, it's kind of just basically the same thing. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a really solid track. It's, so... 
Half of my friends hate Grumble Volcano for some reason, and I've never been able to understand why. They turned hell into a Mario Kart course. That's extremely cool. Between the multiple branching paths, fiery obstacles, and parts of the track itself sinking into the lava as the laps progress, it's just an incredibly solid, intense course, and the perfect way to cap off the Star Cup. Plus, while it definitely hit its stride visually in 8, the original absolutely still holds up, even when something like the original Moo Moo Meadows doesn't. It's a really good track, and I will personally fight each and every Grumble Volcano hater to defend its glory. And with that, all the B tiers are done. And we're do, do I need to fight Shay for this? I think I I think he, he would want to fight me because my original ranking of Grumble... Actually, you know what? No, I think me and Shay for this are right in line. What number was that? Yeah, I mean, I have Grumble Volcano, I think, like, one spot lower than uh, Schaeferless. Um, obviously, I have, you know, uh, what I have Moo Moo Meadows ahead of it. So, it, you know, maybe he's, he'll, he would want to fight me on that one. But, I, yeah, I think I think Grumble Volcano is solid. Super interesting atmosphere. Um, love that, the, that the, the track is falling apart lap by lap. Uh, one of the most challenging courses for sure and i can appreciate a very challenging course especially that isn't rainbow road just because you know you don't especially in these early games pre mario kart 8 deluxe you didn't find too many very challenging tracks not named rainbow road so uh, yeah i can appreciate it I, I can, I guess, sort of understand people. I feel like it is a pretty, a pretty polarizing track. I find it interesting that me and Schaeferless both have it like in the middle. I feel like there's people that love this track and would maybe even rank it in the top 10, maybe top 5. But then there's going to be people that have it in like their bottom 10 quite easily. So you guys will have to let me know what you think about that. It's interesting. But I'm, I'm about with Schaeferless right in the middle with it. But I feel like most people are at one end of the spectrum with it cartwheel's track selection is so good that literally half of them are a tier and above that's impressive some truly glorious race courses why don't we take a is that a little hint is that a little hint at the top spot um but yeah there's there's some courses in here that are certainly not a tier to me that's just <laughs> oh battle. let's go do every a hey, if you are regulars on these videos you know i love the little detours in the battle mode personally not much of a fan of the mario kart we we battle mode uh they they kind of ruined balloon battle and it's just nonsense but look we still got to go over it and we got to rank these tracks battle mode. is it because the maps are bad no not at all no the 10 maps available to duke it out on are mostly really great in fact let's rank all of them right now let's go 10 gba battle course 3 this one takes the l or rather four of them because the l-shaped <laughs> obstacles are super annoying and constantly get in your way when you're trying to make it back to the center aside from those there's nothing going on in this map it f***ing sucks don't pick it number nine game that's harsh cookie land Visually cute, but so tiny and cramped. Maneuvering on this one is incredibly annoying and unfun. Number eight. Yeah, that Cookie Land looks solid in Double Dash. Certainly, certainly not meant for 12 racers. I mean, there's a reason why, uh, you know, it could almost feel a little crammed on Double Dash. And that's maximum four players in battle mode. So you're tripling the amount of racers on that map and you have to play with the 12 racers right it's not like uh you know double dash where you can only play with a couple of your friends like you're forced to play with all 12 way too congested you can't do anything uh snes battle course 4 it's it's the same thing as the other one just like SNES massive already the maps are starting to get good the sheer number of lanes you can go through in this one makes for some pretty satisfying methods of outwitting your opponent that's fair Number seven, that one's nice because with the other lanes like it, it can feel a little boring to just drive because there's super long stretches all over the place and it can be sometimes hard to access other racers but if you're like super into looking at the mini map there like that map adds a ton of strategy with like oh like, I think I'm going to be able to cut off this person here and hit them with my, you know, green shell or whatever. And, and so I do like that aspect chomp of it. Wheel, a cool underwater casino atmosphere. And it's fun to dodge the chain chomp and trick off the big ramp in the middle. Number six. And That's a solid track. Skyscraper. Doing tricks to quickly switch between parts of the area is satisfying. And it's way harder to fall off compared to the original, which is nice because the focus is where it should be. On killing each other. Number five, Thwomp Desert. 
Tricking off the shockwaves this thwomp gets off is incredibly fun, and overall it's just super hectic and enjoyable. Number four, DS Twilight House. I love. Man, we're going we're going through these at lightning speed. I can barely process. I mean, I'd say, I mean, I agree with everything he said there. To me, those like three courses are kind of like lumped together in in a tier for me. I I definitely say Lighthouse Mansion is ahead of those. Uh, I loved this on DS. And, and it still holds up in Wii, no doubt. Maneuvering through the different rooms, and the aesthetic is on point. It's just a shame DS only had one Battle Course music track, and it's hilariously unfitting for this map. Number three, Block Plaza. Good evolution of Block Fort with tons of statues that can have funny me heads yep. on them. Good Plus, track. It's it more precarious as it goes along, since the structures sink and more cliffs form. I like that. Number two. Yeah, I do. I do like the change uh, throughout the map in that one. Definitely creates for a whole different dynamic uh later into the battle delfino pier one of my absolute favorites Th this one's awesome uh even when i was younger i didn't even understand what was happening on this battle course like i didn't i didn't know where i was i didn't know what was happening but it was just a great time delfino pier avoiding the rising water that instantly kills you and getting to explore a whole new area halfway through before it gets flooded such great mechanics because of underwater driving this course wouldn't be the same if it was brought back nowadays but for the time it was a super neat idea and extremely fun to battle on number one funky stage and, and to me this is undoubtedly number one like it just it just has to be yeah. the opening alone cements this as an all-time classic Plus, there's so many ramps, half pipes, tunnels, and wide open areas that all come together to make something that fully lives up to the name Funky Kong. Incredible, exciting, and funky as hell, it's easily the best battle map in the game. So yeah, clearly the maps aren't the problem since there's 8 really strong ones out of 10. So why is this mode so bad? Because they force you to play it in teams with computer players. Your performance does not matter if your AI teammates drop the Let him cook. The ball. Plus, you're locked to a time limit of three minutes. You can't make it longer, shorter, or remove it entirely. What could have been one of the series' best battle modes got completely fucked over by the rule set it forces upon you. And what's worse, none of the Wii battle courses ever returned in 7 or 8 Deluxe, games with actual good battle modes. Funky Stadium is currently locked to this piece of shit awful mode. This makes me so mad that I'm going to talk about Squarespace to calm myself down. Squarespace hey, dude, we get the little Squarespace advertisement. And you got to love that. He's going to calm Shaferless down, kind of reel him in after that. I know he really wants Funky Stadium to return. Um, you know, interesting no. Interesting no. I, they didn't add battle maps to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, right? You know, we didn't we didn't add any extra through the DLC. Kind of sad. Alright, this is a long, so long advert. Where's the code, Shaferless? I'll plug you. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free W. Let me give you let me give you the shout out. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org, or you can always get a more specific one like .art if you want to be. That's a lot of dots. Share your passions or promote your business with the rest of the slash shape for list to save. There it is, dude. Everybody, ten percent discount. All right, it's right there, dude. Look at that shape for list. Shout out. Hey Mario. We're finally we finally made it. Did we? I, I really didn't need that. Like, I wasn't falling asleep, Schaeferless. That was way too loud and obnoxious. Right after the little advert. I'm sorry. And this is where some people may be bad with me. This is one of the tracks I've been warning you this entire time. This is one of the tracks. That I, I absolutely loved this track on DS. I think they... I don't... I really don't like it in Wii. I I don't think it fits Wii as well. They didn't make any changes to it really. I I just blah. This is a blah track. I, I to me, it I I'd rather race on the DS version of this. I just it's it, it needs to be a lot lower. Out there, but it is so pleasant and endearing with a deceptively large amount of shortcuts and alternate paths to be found. It feels like you never take the exact same path on each lap because of all the hedges to weave in and out of and chomps to avoid. I guess it could be a little prettier since the colors are kind of washed out. Like, seriously, forget the 8 version looking better. The DS version looks better than the Wii. That's what I'm saying. See, he's, he's speaking my mind. And I guess, you know, he's kind of... 
I mean, he's acknowledging the the downsides to the, this track, but apparently it's not enough to move the needle for him, but it surely is for me. I mean, this is not a top 16 track on Wii. Really solid all around. This is a great track. I'm not gonna lie, even though it's called Daisy Circuit, uh, you know, my first years playing this game, I didn't even realize it was a circuit track. Cause it, it you 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 really do not realize that this is a circuit track uh, as, as you play through it. Like it 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 really it feels awesome to play. In fact, it probably should have just been called Daisy Plaza or something. Yeah. Nothing like the other circuits at all. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous stroll through this I love it. Town Look at that sunset. With this amazing orange sunset covering it all. This is Dude, one we're just... I would kill to see in Dude, we are we are synced up right now. Me and Shafeless. Even though we didn't agree on that last ranking, we did we we were synced up on a few of the ideas at least. Um I mean, I feel like I feel like we're just we're just connected right now. Eight, it would have been one of the prettiest courses in the entire series. And the statues of Luigi and Daisy dancing. Great. Turn it to the me. One that you can ruin with random me heads. Delightful. The layout of this course yeah. is it do, simple, that one doesn't look great. Thankfully not too simple. Not, Making for a course I always enjoy picking to admire the scenery. And not as good as the Luigi home. statue with the me. So long, Bowser. N64 Bowser's Castle is the only what? course to ever actively freak me out as a kid. Something about the eerie music, dark atmosphere, even those glowing green arrow signs that felt like they were pointing you towards your doom. It all came together for a hauntingly great course. Though, I actually think the most terrifying element of all as a kid was this one thwomp block. <laughs> what the fuck did he do? I don't know, but just imagining the horrific atrocities this hunk of rock must have committed for Bowser to imprison him just absolutely terrified me growing up. Aside from the Who knows what big bad Bowser... Uh, you know what his reasoning was to to lock that thwomp up, but look, we are we all know Bowser is big and bad, and he, he he will do some some terrible things, and he is ruthless. So you know, R.I.P. to that thwomp. But uh, this is a solid track. Spooky, stuff. It's Spooky scary. Twisted course to race on, and an absolutely perfect end to the lightning. I have no clue why Nintendo refuses to bring any Bowser's Castle back outside of this and the GBA ones, but at least we can always admire how delightfully terrifying this remake was. Uh, one thing I do like, you know, he mentioned, like, the, the moving thwomps, just the eerie atmosphere. E they even, like, added a little bit of a touch with the moving item boxes. I, I always liked that. I mean, it fits, not only does it fit with the theme of the track, but again, just add a little element to where... You know, do you oh do you want to try to drive in a straight line and you know take the most optimal path and risk not getting a box, or are you gonna try to like swerve out of your way at the last second to make sure you hit the item box? Um, and that that's not some big skill test. That's not some major impact on the course. I I understand that, but any little change or thing within a track that makes you think an extra second or adds any slight element of strategy these are all things that i like it, it makes each course feel more different um it, while also making it just a little bit more competitive and you know adding a little bit of strategy into uh a game where it can sometimes you're just you just you know you get hit with four blue birdies in for in first place and then you end up in like fifth so it's how Mar mario kart goes <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're getting another ad. Uh, but dude, this is another one. So These are the two tracks that I had in mind. As I've been forewarning you the entire time, DS Peach Gardens, DS Delfino Square. DS Delfino Square is like probably top five for me in DS. I mean, you guys can check out the DS uh, course ranking reaction of Shapeless uh, in the description. I, I said a lot of positives about this map. I don't I don't love what we did to it. I mean is that is that bad to say? Is that a hot take? I, f I mean I do feel like everybody loves this track but I, I just again don't love what we we did to it here. I, I it's not, it, it to me it doesn't have the same charm just driving through the the you know driving through it and you know seeing all the piantas out there and uh, just, just the whole atmosphere 
it, it just doesn't feel as good to me. Plus, I mean, the, the whole thing, right, is, oh, the drawbridge goes up now. But, or was that even, I forget, was that... I, maybe i'm i don't know i forget if that was even that may have been in the ds game i completely forget maybe it's just you can trick off it now obviously i i i just don't it just doesn't do it for me and we it just doesn't but then you play on it and realize just what a delight it is the breezy music the multiple paths and shortcuts and the killer drawbridge at the end make this a fantastic one to revisit it's just so charming and homey like this is easily one of the mario kart courses i would most want to live in an absolute joy from start to finish yeah i mean I, I agree with everything he said again this is one of my favorite tracks in ds i guess i guess i'm i guess my grading scale is just a little bit different when it comes to remade tracks because like you may be thinking like if this is one of your favorite tracks on ds like sure we may have like more awesome tracks than ds but an awesome track on ds should still be ranked very highly on wii especially if they didn't really change it too much i don't know i just if you're gonna if you're gonna take the time to remake a track it certainly shouldn't be worse or feel worse and, and i i do want a little something new to to spit it you know spice it up especially when, when you have you know technology upgrades but i i really can't explain it uh we delfino uh it just it just doesn't do it for me. I mean, I wouldn't rank it like incredibly low, but it's just it, it, it wouldn't be top 16 for me. Wario's gold mine. Talk about a difficulty spike. Who thought this was a good idea for the flower cup? Well, whoever they are, <laughs> I honestly got to give them props. This course always felt like an omen for how difficult Rainbow Road would be later on. In fact, I know a lot of casual fans of the franchise who specifically never wanted to play on Wario's Goldmine or Rainbow Road, considering them equally difficult. I definitely wouldn't go that far, but yeah, this course can be a bit of a challenge for newcomers. Nowadays, though, it's a blast. It feels like you're on a roller coaster ride, and its exhilarating nature, coupled with the creative theme, makes for a very memorable course I really enjoy. I don't really have a preference between this and the 8 version. They're both solid interpretations of a banger track. I agree with like the roller coaster kind of feel to it. It is definitely one of the hardest tracks in the game. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty clear top three of Rainbow Road, Grumble, and uh, this one, right? Maybe Grumble doesn't make it. I I'd have to think about it. But I always loved this track. Uh, personally, I always thought the Flower Cup, man, is just so, so good. Be I mean, you're just... You got DK Summit, Wario's Gold Mine, right, Coconut Mall, and then, uh, like, ugh, it's just, it's so good. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a really good track. Uh, super unique elements, like, you, you've just never seen them before in other games, I feel like, or in other, yeah, in other Mario Kart games, like, just really solid overall. The Wii Bowser's Castle is up there as one of my favorites with so much variety in its design. The twist, the opener, the abundance of thwomps, the geysers you can trick off of at the end, the giant mechanical Bowser pelting you with fireballs, meaning if you want to use the center ramp, you gotta time it perfectly to not get hit. It's all an absolute blast. My favorite detail, though, has always been this billboard that has Boo and Tribos on it and says Showtime. No idea what the intention there was, but as a kid, I always assumed they just had a talk show together. <laughs> assumed they had a talk show together. That's kind of funny. I, I always looked at that billboard too because it's like right as you're coming uh out of like the last trick right before you go outside right i always looked at it and i thought it was cool but i guess i never really thought why it was there but like looking back it is kind of like what was the purpose of that like i i don't know but together and they were doing some advertising at bowser's place that's probably what it was Nintendo, if you ever bring this course back, do not remove the Showtime billboard or else I will riot. Yeah, I mean, this is a really solid Bowser Castle. One of my favorite Bowser Castles, like he said. Um, like how they brought back the, like, big Bowser uh, that they had from Double Dash. That that middle section is so cool because it's like you're, you're focused on multiple things. You got the fireballs and then it's like, oh, do I have to try to, you know take the little half pipes boost over the mud and avoid it or am i gonna try to go through the mud to get to that little short 
ramp to just take the straight path, but then I got to worry about the fireball. I mean, great little section. Just it's another one of those tracks where every section of the course I feel like is so well fleshed out. Um, even you know, you you wouldn't think that the after you exit the castle, going back to the finish line they they could make that like feel like a cool little part but i mean i think the geysers is, is an awesome addition and like a good way to end the course so really solid gamecube waluigi stadium is such a natural fit for this game's trick and half pipe system that it's shocking to think it's a retro course mm -hmm. this is absolutely the mario kart game it feels like it was made for with so many exhilarating tricks to perform and obstacles to dodge. Also, as kids, my brother and I thought this dirt was Waluigi poop. Yes, this is real. We genuinely thought that for some reason. But yeah, not much else to say. Just a consistently fun course. Uh, did anybody else think that was Waluigi's poop? I'd, I'd be curious. Very curious if anybody else thought that. I certainly did not think that. Um, but I mean, look, Waluigi Stadium. Great selection uh to, to to remake a track in in the sense of it fits perfectly for this game system like he said honestly i mean if you guys watched my reaction to his double dash video you watched our double dash ranking video you know we rank this incredibly high this is one of the best tracks in double dash it really didn't need to be remade um but the, the the game system just fits with it so perfectly that i mean yeah it's 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 awesome. This is a great track, still. Prior to 7 and 8, perhaps the best retro glow up in the whole series, mechanically. <laughs> Moonview Highway is an absolute banger of a city course. One that I've been dying to see return for years now. It's pretty unlikely that we'll get this in 8 Deluxe, considering there's gonna be... This is where, this is where I might lose some people. If I haven't lost you already. I'm not a big Moonview Highway fan. I'm just not. I mean, you, you won't look. If, if you've watched these before, you know I'm not big on the city tracks anyway. Uh, take a look at Mushroom Bridge, Mushroom City. Uh, I mean, a lot of other courses too. But I, I've just never been a big fan. But let's let's let him explain. A lot of city courses in this DLC, but fine, whatever. At least I'll always have the memories. I do have one slight nitpick with this course. That being how odd it is that the hardest part with the tightest turns are at the beginning, and then the second half of the course is just way easier. I feel like it would have been better if you started the course at this toll booth right before the city, so then the hardest part would come last. But whatever, it's a nitpick. The vibes in this course are immaculate, from the music to the sights and sounds to dodging all the traffic and trying to hit as many boost panels as you can. I always particularly loved how your Mies become toll booth operators. Plus, the advertisements in the city are very cute. I like this one for something called the Mushroom Moon because the font they use is literally just the Pikmin font, and that makes me happy. Overall. In absolute yeah so the section there where it showed the mushroom moon poster like it is really cool to, to look around i think that they they did that area really well i've just never been super into the the traffic courses this one's uh very similar i do like the you know the trees and like these hill aspects to it um i like how it's nighttime you know just a couple different things to make it feel different from many of the other traffic courses uh, interesting that he mentioned that, yeah, his nitpick is that the hardest part of the track is first, and I completely agree. I never really thought about that until he said that. Uh, what I was going to talk about was, you know, as a kid, especially when I wasn't as good at the game, I would often either fall off at the beginning or constantly get hit or flattened by cars and often find myself near the back of the pack at the start of the race. And then I just get, you know, because this game has so many good catch-up items, you know, we talked about a golden mushroom, bullet bill, and, you know, so much. Like, I found myself just immediately catching up to the pack because I just got, like, one great item. And then, oh, I'm right back near the top onto the easier part at the end. And, you know, at post lap one, I'm basically back in first place, even though I had, like, the worst start in the lobby that's not a good feeling you shouldn't really be able to do that you should be like having to slowly kind of work your way back um i mean yeah, it's it, it it 
and not only is the first part harder, the first part is, is harder because one, there's way more traffic in the first part of the track compared to the rest of it, but also it's way narrower. Plus, you can also see, like, I just want you to take a look at this shape, okay? Here's the first part of the track, right? There's turns, okay? Let's look at the turns. Let's also uh, see how narrow, look how, look how thin this area is. Now let's look at the, the and then plus, there's way, there's a lot more traffic during this part of the track, okay? Now let's look here. There are absolutely no curves, no turns. Three straightaways, okay? Look how wide they are compared to this, okay? And to top it off, there's very little traffic. This, if, if they could have, you know, somehow kept a lot of the same vibe i'm not saying keep it this small and with this much traffic throughout the rest of the course if they could have captured something like this throughout the entire track i'd be able to rank it higher this little you is just i know it, it it doesn't fit it's out of place and it just doesn't capture what a traffic course should be to me as i said when it came to uh mushroom uh, city right like if you're going to make a traffic course, I need it to be chaotic. I need it to be hectic. And that's what this part accomplishes. And the the other probably 60% of the track completely fails at. Maybe 70% of the track. Like, I just don't... I don't understand how we go from incredibly... An incredible amount of traffic, turns, and a very thin, narrow uh, road to race on to very little traffic, incredibly... Uh, you know, wide area to drive on along with no turns. That's my rant. That's my, that's my speech. Thank you all for, that's my Ted talk. Uh, thank you all for listening. Maybe I convinced some of you, maybe I didn't, maybe some of you just don't even care and you love that other portion of this track or it, it, that doesn't bother you. But that, that's, that's my reasoning. This is not, this is not a track I love. Uh, where did I, where did I rank this track? Uh, I had it at 18, okay? So, I mean, I still gave it some credit. I mean, a lot of people are probably going to think that's a, a criminally low. It just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't do it for me. I, I, I think that, you know, a little more than half the tracks are better than this. Back. Sorry. Please bring it back. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. Here we come. Mushroom Gorge is a classic. Let's go. Now I can, you know, I can take a deep breath. I know I was ranting. I know I got a little long-winded. You know, a lot of you probably didn't like that I insulted one of your favorite tracks. I apologize, but now we can get back on track in a, in, in, and talk about an amazing course that is Mushroom Gorge. A course so beloved and iconic that Nintendo can't stop themselves from bringing it back in every Mario Kart. It was a priority course that returned in 7, then Tour, and now 8 Deluxe. Layout-wise, I think 8 Deluxe is where it's at its best with an optional glider shroom in addition to some retained shortcuts. But there are some things about the Wii version that just can't be topped. Like the look of the mushrooms. They just look so tantalizingly bouncy in this version, and only this version. Why do they look so- Yeah, I- 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 since playing the new games, I really haven't liked the look of the new mushrooms. I'm, I'm not sure why they decided to make that change, but it, it just... I just don't like the, the flat look. It's just blah. Flat in every other iteration of the course. The lack of a glider shroom in the final section also means that you... And also, you can see not only are they more round, they kind of like... When you're not even on them, they kind of like move a little bit. You see this? In every other well, are they, you know, the the this one does it too that you just saw, but like with the roundness, it it, I think, it adds to it. In the final section also means that you I don't know. Have to master hopping between these shrooms, and it was pretty difficult to get the hang of as a kid. But that just made mastering this course all the more satisfying. An exhilarating delight of a course with killer music and an awesome bouncing concept that got incorporated into so many future Mario Kart courses. It honestly might be a bit too high concept for a Mushroom Cup course, but like, it's Mushroom Gorge. <laughs> You're legally obligated to put it here, regardless of its concept or difficulty. That's actually a great point. I, I never thought about that. This 
was the track that introduced the like the bounce mechanic to Mario Kart. That's pretty incredible because, like he said, that it is used in so many tracks. Um, I, I never really thought about that, but I mean, you got to give credit to, to Mushroom Gorge for introducing that for sure. Definitely doesn't feel like a Mushroom Cup track. I always thought the Mushroom Cup in this game is so incredibly underrated because you already know I think Luigi Circuit tad underrated. Mushroom Gorge is awesome. Moo Moo Meadows, you know, I rank it higher than probably most people. And Toad's Factory, which hasn't even been revealed yet, is amazing. So, I mean, it is a, it, it it's probably the best Mushroom Cup in all of Mario Kart for me. Not really much of a shock, but what are you gonna do? This course is a blast, a barrel blast that is, because the barrel blasts you. Got him. This game is actually good, despite slightly <laughs> being the weakest of three barrel cannon courses. I apologize for any Barrel Blast fans. In this, game, this one has the best implementation of said cannon. There's nothing quite like landing on the peak of DK Mountain, then turning around, spotting the barrel cannon in the distance, and saying, holy shit, that's where I started the race from? It gives off such a delightful, adventurous, go anywhere mentality. And the trek down the mountain is super engaging with tight turns and tons of boulders to avoid. It all culminates with that precarious bridge section that just feels so satisfyingly bumpy. Plus, it's a good place to pelt others with items. My favorite pastime on any jungle-themed DK course in this game. Truly a delight of a track. Okay. So, yeah, I wanted to pause it here because I want to actually talk about this section. But, uh, you know, we already talked about the bridge. It's amazing. Uh, this, this is an awesome track. It, it probably is the best. Uh, I would rank it as the best uh, retro track in this game. Um... What I do want to talk about is these these wooden platforms that they added here because I think something that would have held this track back a little bit in the Wii version is if they just kept this uh, going down the mountain a complete straightaway. And the reason I say that is because the driving between Double Dash and Wii is very different. And if, if you were to play Double Dash, you'll notice like the way that your vehicle bounces as you're driving down the mountain is very distinct. And I always really liked that feel. Uh, we doesn't have that so if you were just to go down the mountain just driving straight the entire time you're gonna it's it, it's not gonna feel the same it won't be as satisfying and or, or engaging to to be driving down the mountain you're not gonna get that same rush as you're as you're going down the mountain as you would in double dash by adding these you, you add into that tr the, the trick mechanic you can get the boost it, it adds another element plus when you land because you were up so high you kind of like get that bounce once you hit the ground too which adds a little bit to what the double dash version had so i think kind of an underrated element that they decided to throw into this track it seems like nothing but I just try to imagine like go watch gameplay if, if you if you haven't of double dash going down the mountain and maybe you won't be able to get the full feeling if you're not driving on it i don't know but like compare that to just trying to imagine just straight driving down this i think there'd be a big difference so kudos to the devs for implementing that You'd think a certain other unsung hero of the track make this one feel redundant, but not at all this is way more and than a nice flavor change and, and ladies and gentlemen, we are we are over an hour officially into this video. If you guys are enjoying it, and if you're still here, if you're still watching this video, shout out to you for being an absolute trooper and making it through so far. Uh, comment down below that you made it this far, like, and I'll definitely make sure to, to, to heart that comment and shout you out. But yeah, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would mean a lot. Uh, Three Piece Media to the Moon. Oh yes, we work real hard and Toad Factory. It is genuinely insane. Toad's to Factory. Toad's Factory has never been remade yet. I understand seven not having room for it compared to other priority courses, but eight? Really? You thought Moo Moo Meadows and Grumble Volcano were more important to bring back than this one? On top Can we get Toad's Factory in in Wave Eight? Is that a possibility? Is that possible? Toad's Factory Wave Eight? I don't know why this hasn't come back in 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 eight deluxe like it's baffling there's some courses out there that i'm like why is this in the game toad factory one of my absolute favorites this deserves to be to be in the top five without a doubt i mean i guess we can just hold on to hope for wave eight i suppose on top of that it hasn't even come back in tour meaning it's unlikely to get picked for the booster course pass 
This is a f***ing banger that puts most other Mushroom Cup courses to shame. From the unique setting that's never really been done before in Mario Kart, to the countless conveyor belts you can make use of for a boost, to the insanely phenomenal music that easily stands as one of my favorite Mario Kart songs ever, it is a travesty that this course is currently trapped on just the Wii. What the f*** are you waiting for, Nintendo? Come on! Anyway... This is one of my favorite soundtracks. Also, was that the dude from Incredibles that he got in the background? The villain? Is that what that was? I'm sorry, I just had to rewind this. What the f is this the is this the villain what's his name the villain from incredibles i think that's who that is okay now we're in s tier oh so he didn't even have toad's factory in the top five toad's factory's top five for me without a doubt uh let me ch let me check my list let me check my list just uh yeah i had toad's factory at the five spot i i I'm assuming the course that he's about to name, I have in reverse with him. Oh my goodness. Right as I'm trying to make a point, everybody, we have, we, we, of course, we get a little advertisement, but this is exactly what I had in mind. I had Toad's Factory at five, DK Summit at six. He had Toad's Factory at six, DK Summit at five. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Great tracks. Great minds think alike evolution of DK Mount. Just this consistently exciting thrill ride down a snowy peak. I'd argue that this course makes the best use of the game's half-pipe system. All Agreed. Incredibly helpful boosts to anyone looking to pull off some sick as hell moves. There's also tons of terrain variety with so many ramps, bumps, and snowboarding shy guys to dodge all as the chipper music cheers you on. Very few courses are as exciting as this one with its delightful extreme sports edge and thrilling descent down the summit. The only real issue I have is why is there a giant statue of Mario on DK Summit? That that always that always did not add up well with, to me. Uh, I really wanted a DK statue. I really did. Um, especially because you don't have one of those like on DK Mountain, right? You just get them on a billboard. Like, could think? Imagine if that's DK, right there. Oh. I may have to put it at number five over Toad's Factory. Authorize that. Miraculously, Tor actually fixed that and replaced it with. Hey, statue. look at that. So I hope that same statue makes its way into Eight Deluxe when this course arrives, because you know it's going to if it's already in Tor. Actually, that's a good question. It isn't Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. I'm pretty sure, and I can't remember what the statue is. Chat, you're gonna have to comment down below. I don't remember what the statue is. Did they did they keep it fixed? Da -da 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 -da. That's that's Double Dash's music. Double Dash's Rainbow Road theme, the greatest I think in the entire series, and that's why he played it right there. He's played Mario Kart Wii, which means everybody's been thoroughly acquainted with what is arguably the most difficult Rainbow Road to do, <laughs> and that's why I love it. It pulls no punches with how sharp some of its turns are and how easy it is to fall off and plummet to earth dying in a fiery explosion before Lakitu goes all the way down to the planet and picks you up before bringing you all the way <laughs> oh poor poor luigi yeah, i adore wii's rainbow road so much not only does its difficulty make for such a fun course to rage at with your friends oh. but the music and presentation are both simply magical i often get chills as i get launched through the rainbow tunnel or hear the gorgeous sound effects as i perform some half pipe tricks it's just wonderful. The inclusion of Star Bits as a galaxy reference is also a great little touch that I'm glad they added. Overall, a masterful track that combines a tough but incredibly satisfying <laughs> layout with an absolutely gorgeous presentation. Again, there's no way this isn't the very last track in the Booster Course Pass, so we'll see it again soon. Wow. Bold prediction from Schaeferless claiming that we, Rainbow Road, will be the final track in the booster course pass i don't know i it's a great guess I, chat i mean comment down below in the comments do you do you agree with shaferless will this be the final course to the booster pass I spent hours of my life but obviously yeah that's a top five track clearly was, obviously mushroom gorge my top three consists of fan favorite courses that nintendo just won't stop bringing back in everything 
from being priority courses in 7, to getting added to Tor, to most likely being upcoming additions to Mario Kart 8. These are three courses where the hype is absolutely justified, and I can fully get behind them being in every Mario Kart ever. And the first of them is Koopa Cape. Driving alongside this Before we even hear what he has to say about Koopa Cape, I just want to give some credit to this game, because I bashed it a lot on uh, the remade tracks not really adding anything or being worse than the original. This is one where I have to give Wii credit. This version of Koopa Cape is the best. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe buried this track. Uh, I, I'm very curious to see where uh, he'll rank Koopa Cape for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because I don't think I'm going to have it very high. Oh, it's brutal. I, I, I'm, I mean, it's still, like, okay. Like, it's not a bad track in 8 Deluxe, but it is infinitely better on Wii. Rushing water is so satisfying with the vibrant music complementing it perfectly. But the second half of the course really takes the cake. You go down a pipe and find yourself in this gorgeous glass tube that stretches underwater. The music even dynamically changes to match the new atmosphere down here, and I love it. It reminds me of one of those see-through aquariums that always yes. surprised me as a kid. And it's no different here on this course. It's cozy, exciting, and just overall a magical track. One that doesn't look like it's going to be too special at first, before absolutely mesmerizing you with its beauty. Seven kind of ruined the magic by opening it up and making it just like any other underwater segment, though. Sorry. Perhaps this summer I thought your and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, didn't make it any better. Sorry. Maple, like the syrup. No, uh, but Koopa Cape, that's, I believe that's my number one. Let me just... Give it a quick little look here. Yeah, Koopa Cape's my number one. So, I mean, you can go, it, you can go whatever way you want to with these, with these, you know, three to five tracks. But I hated Maple Freeway as a kid because this one turn on the tree trunk was really hard, and I could never do it. <laughs> it was, it's a tough one. Bad. I grew up and I learned how to actually play Mario Kart and realized, whoa, the course is good. As someone who firmly believes that fall is the best and prettiest season of all time, I gotta give this course. Hey, who, who's who else is in the fall best season camp? Who else? Comment down below. I'm right there with him. The most aesthetically gorgeous tracks in Mario Kart history. Such a nice, cozy theme coupled with incredibly strong track design and music make for an instant classic. I love the sharp turns, dodging the wigglers, finding items hidden in piles of leaves, pulling off this really cool shortcut right at the start, and bouncing on this net that tragically never made a return after gliders became the hip new thing. There's just so much to discover and enjoy with this one. It's one of the most alive feeling Mario Kart courses there is. Easily one of my favorites in the whole series. But it just barely comes short of the one, the only. The all-time GOAT. I just realized that GOAT stands for greatest of all time, so I didn't need to say all-time before GOAT, because now I just said all-time greatest of all time. But you know what? That's fine, because I just really need to emphasize how amazing this course is. Let's talk about it right now. I think I think Schaeferless lost it a little bit right there. Clearly a big fan of Coconut Mall. You just got Coconut Mall. <laughs> Come when my mind as a kid. Like I mean what? it it's you great. Turn a shopping mall into a race course? That's insane. But they did it. A masterful concept that's beautifully realized here. There's nothing quite like desperately trying to figure out which escalator is the right one to take, or tricking off the fountain, or mushrooming your way through. Dude, great point by Schaeferless there. I really don't like in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, they not only got rid of the escalator to where it's just like not regular parts of an escalator and it's like arrows and just ramps that you go up, but they, they literally made a green and red arrow pointing up and down so you know which path to take. Frantically trying to figure out which escalator was going up and down is awesome. I cannot believe they removed that. Open store shortcut for seeing the words have a nice day followed immediately by a death defying jump into the parking lot <laughs> below, where you then gotta dodge these me's who might be some of the worst drivers on the entire planet. It's just incredible. Throughout my entire life, this course has always been my first choice whenever booting this game up because it's just magical. It captures the zany fun of Mario Kart perfectly through what is perhaps the most creative theme for a course in the series so far. There's tons of fun turns, trick opportunities, and different paths to take. Plus it also helps that the Wii version still remains the best interpretation of this course to date. Since Agreed. 7 and 8 both took their turns neutering it a bit. As a result, the original still reigns- Come on. Oh yeah, and this is my favorite music track in all of Mario Kart. 
Honestly, what else? It is very good. Course is beloved by myself and millions of other players worldwide. It's Coconut Mall, baby. Easily the best course in Mario Kart Wii. So I personally wouldn't put it number one. You guys know I put Koopa Cape there, but like I said, I, you cannot go wrong with any of those. Uh, you know, three. Even you know, if you want to throw Rainbow Road in there, like those four. Pick your. Pick whatever you want. I'm not going to argue with you. Let me know in the comments which Mario Kart game you'd like me to rank the tracks for next. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go petition Nintendo to add Luigi Circuit to the Booster Course Pass. Because it would be funny. Good night, Tri-State Area. Good night, Tri-State Area. And there we have it, everybody. We, we finally got through Shaverless's Mario Kart Wii course ranking. I know I've gotten so many comments from you all asking for this. It is finally here. Uh, thank you all for the recommendation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, you can check out his original video, link in the description. If you want to see my other reactions to Schaeferless's course rankings, check the description. Also, our own Double Dash course ranking and item tier, uh, or item ranking of Double Dash. All those videos will be linked, linked in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe button. Uh, join the community, and uh, yeah, we will see you in the next one.